Welcome you uh, to this class on HSC First Paper English. Now, dear students, in the previous two classes, I finished uh, lesson one of unit one. And in today's class, we are starting lesson two. And you know that unit one is basically focused on different important personalities. And in lesson two, we see uh, Nelson Mandela, you know, great South African leader. And this passage, I mean, lesson two, is focused on Nelson Mandela and the title of lesson two is Nelson Mandela from apartheid fighter to president. Apartheid means, you know, racial discrimination. So apartheid fighter means a fighter who stands against racial discrimination. So in this particular lesson, I mean, lesson two of unit one, we will learn about Nelson Mandela. We will learn how he struggled against the oppression, oppressions and suppressions you know, perpetrated on the black people of uh, South Africa and how he fought against those, you know, oppressions and uh, how much time he spent behind bars, that means uh, uh, in imprisonment. And Mandela is basically a, a symbol for, of liberty, you know, a symbol of a struggle for people across the world. So when we will read you know this lesson as i explained in my previous two classes that the textbook is very important and you know that we are dealing with the textbook now there are different items in hsc first paper english so there are some items which may be uh, not completely related to the textbook but the number of those items is very few most of the items are linked with the textbook and uh, you know there are some items like flowchart, like graph chart, like theme, and these items require different classes. We will arrange those classes obviously, but putting emphasis on the textbook in our primary classes, we want to introduce, we want to let you understand that we are giving utmost importance on the textbook and reading of the textbook. And unless uh, we understand these lessons properly we will not be able to answer questions, uh, basically multiple choice questions, question answers, and uh, flowchart, and uh, theme, summary writing. So if we want to do well in these items, we have to read the textbook properly. And in order to increase our vocabulary, our understanding of the textbook is also very important. So in today's class, we are going to uh, know about Nelson Mandela. So dear students, uh, let's start the passage and uh, let's start explaining. Now we are starting uh, lesson two of unit one. You know, the title of unit one is People or Institutions Making History. And the title of lesson two is Nelson Mandela from Apartheid Fighter to President. So dear students, uh, I have already said that uh, this, uh, you know, uh, text is very important for you. Uh, because uh, you have to answer uh, many questions, I mean, many items from uh, which are based on this textbook. And you all know about Nelson uh, Mandela, and we will come to know uh, more information about this great personality when we will read this lesson. Nelson Mandela guided South Africa from the shackles of apartheid to a multiracial democracy. Now, Nelson Mandela, uh, he is, an, uh, you know, he is a well-known leader and uh, he guided South Africa from the shackles of apartheid to a multiracial democracy. So shackles, uh, you know, shackles means it's, it's a kind of imprisonment and it's, it's a kind of chain. In simple word, it's, it's chain. So Mandela guided South Africa, it, it means that Mandela directed South Africa and uh, Mandela, uh, you know, uh, inspired the people of uh, South Africa and that's how he guided and he raised the voice of democracy. So Mandela guided, Nelson Mandela guided South Africa from the shackles of apartheid. So he guided, uh, you know, South Africa from one position to another position. What was the previous position? The previous position was shackles of apartheid. Shackles of apartheid means chain of race, racial discrimination. Apartheid means racial discrimination. So the people of South Africa, basically the black people, they were uh, betrayed, they were you know, deceived, they were discriminated 
and that's why this phrase has been used shackles of apartheid that means chain of uh, racial discrimination the black people were racially discriminated the white people you know controlled the white people uh, deceived the black black people they discriminated the black people so why nelson mandela is important that he was such a leader who guided the whole country i mean who guided the whole nation and that's how he changed the, he transformed the nation he uh, transformed the structure of the nation earlier it was a country which was full of you know racial discrimination and under his guidance there was uh, lots there was lots of improvement development and from shackles of apartheid that means chain of racial discrimination they reached to a multi racial democracy that means south africa became a democratic country and democracy was introduced uh, to south africa basically by nelson mandela and his struggle so from this phrase the shackles of apartheid to a multi racial democracy we understand that earlier south africa was a country full of racial discrimination and later under the guidance of nelson mandela it became a democratic country and multi racial democratic country that means there was scope for people of different races to uh, have a position in the government and black people were also allowed to form the government so it became a democratic country as an icon of peace and reconciliation so this phrase uh, you know refers to mandela's qualities that he was a symbol of peace and reconciliation he became a, a symbol of peace and reconciliation reconciliation you know what is the meaning of peace uh, happiness and uh, icon means a symbol so nelson mandela was not simply a person a man he became a symbol he became an icon and he became a symbol of peace and reconciliation reconciliation means a kind of you know uh, compromise understanding and uh, that that i mean nelson mandela stood as a symbol of peace and reconciliation who came to embody embody means you know again a kind of a symbol again mandela was an embodiment of struggle for justice around the world so you know that he embodied the struggle he became the symbol of the struggle for justice around the world so within mandela the essence of struggle for justice it got its room so mandela you know became a symbol of peace and reconciliation and mandela embodied the struggle for justice around the world dear students in unit 1 in all three lessons we will know about the great personalities the greatest personalities of the world and uh, you know that nelson mandela uh, in this uh, particular lesson which we are uh, reading he was a kind of person who was the voice of the oppressed people of the world uh, his voice his voice encouraged millions of uh, billions of Uh, oppressed people across the universe and that's why he became the symbol he became the uh, embodiment of you know fight for a struggle for justice across the universe so mandela was a man was a person of south africa it's true but mandela was equally popular everywhere in the world and mandela was also popular in in this subcontinent as well and everybody uh, knew about him imprisoned for nearly 3 decades for his fight against white minority rule so mandela was jailed he was imprisoned for nearly 3 decades that means around 30 years so almost uh, he spent almost 30 years in jail and why did he spend this 30 years in jail because he fought against racial discrimination and he fought for against white minority rule what does white minority rule mean white minority rule means that in south africa the blacks were the majority but they were denied from 
uh, the government. They could not uh, or they did not have representatives in the government and they were completely ruled uh, by the white people. The white people, they were, you know, a few are in number, uh, but they controlled the government. The power was in their grip. And that's why the white people, though they were minority, they oppressed, they suppressed, they controlled, they dominated uh, the black people. And that is why Mandela fought against this injustice, this irrational domination by the white people because he wanted to have the rooms uh, for the black people as well. Mandela never lost his resolve to fight for his people's emancipation. So Mandela was such a person that though he was imprisoned for 30 years, he did not lose his determination for fighting against people's emancipation. Emancipation means freedom. That though he was in prison for a long time, for long 30 years, he did not lose his resolution, his determination and commitment to fight for people's freedom. So he continued his fight. Though he was in prison repeatedly, he was uh, he, he stayed in jail for around 30 years. You can easily guess a uh, long time. The major time, the prime time of his life was spent behind the bars, I mean, in the jail. But still he continued his fight for uh, the black people's freedom. Emancipation means freedom, I say. He was determined to bring down apartheid. Uh, so what was his intention? What was his aim? His aim was to bring down, that means rule out, that means eliminate uh, apartheid, meaning uh, racial discrimination and thus he wanted to avoid a civil war because there was a kind of civil war going on in South Africa. So he wanted to eliminate, you know, racial discrimination from South Africa and thus uh, he wanted to avoid a civil war. His prestige and charisma, you know, what is the meaning of prestige, uh, his honor, his uh, honor and his charisma means extraordinary skill, extraordinary influence, extraordinary image, uh, which is charismatic. That means uh, who can, uh, you know, guide millions of people, who can inspire millions of people. So that person is termed as a charismatic person. So Mandela's presti prestige and charisma helped him win the support of the world. So his honor, his style, you know, his dignity and his extraordinary power to attract people uh, made him very popular and he gained the support of the world. Why gaining the support of the world was necessary? Because, you know, by this time you have come to understand that Nelson Mandela is a fighter, was a fighter who fought against racial discrimination. And his voice was not simply representing the voice of the oppressed South African people. Rather, his voice was the representative of all suppressed human beings of the world. So that is why he gained popularity uh, across the universe in different countries. I hate race discrimination most intensely and all its manifestations. So he's saying this, you know, you see that it is within quotation. So Mandela is quoted here. That means it's Mandela's speech, direct speech. What did he say? He says, I hate race discrimination most intensely, intensely meaning, uh, you know, deeply. So Mandela hates race discrimination very deeply. And in all its manifestations, and you know, manifestations means the outcome or the external, you know, gestures by means of which people express either consciously or subconsciously their racial consciousness. Now, what is that? Say, for example, if a person behaves in a in a rude manner, in an insulting manner, you know, even in the civilized countries, even nowadays, sometimes we see that the white people insult the black people on uh, the roads. And sometimes they 
uh, use uh, you know different vulgar uh, words or phrases they use insulting uh, phrases uh, towards the black people and sometimes also uh, they physically assault the black people so these are known as manifestations that means when your behavior is ex uh, uh, your internal mentality i mean your mentality your uh, psychological thoughts uh, find an uh, you know expression through your behavior external behavior then it's manifestation so this uh, you know racial uh, you know uh, biasness racial discrimination which remains hidden in a person's mind this racial discrimination sometimes uh, comes outside so this coming outside of any sentiment is known as you know manifestations i have fought it all during my life so what does mandela say he says that throughout my life i have fought against racial discrimination i will fight it now and he says that i will uh, continue my fight and will do so until the end of my days and i will continue to fight against racial discrimination throughout my life mandela said in the, his acceptance speech on becoming south africa's first black president in 1994 so when did he make this remark i mean when did he utter these uh, words mandela said all these things when he delivered his first speech you know when a person becomes president uh, he delivers a speech and this is called acceptance speech so when he delivered his acceptance speech becoming the first black president in south africa in 1994 this is very important that in 1994 nelson mandela became south africa's first black president and all these things that i discussed earlier in quotation uh, basically mandela's own words and he delivered these words in his first speech after becoming south africa's first black president the time for the healing of the wounds has come and he further said that the time for healing the injury has come so you know the meaning of the word heal heal means curing so the time for curing uh, the injury has come so this does not mean head injury uh, arm injury or leg injury or injury in the body it rather means the injury of the mind so mandela is talking about the injury i mean the psychological injury the mental injury and he is talking about uh, uh, to repair the psychological injury and he says that the time for curing these injuries has come the moment to bridge the chasms that divide us has come there is chasm you know chasm means bridge break so bridge or chasm uh, that has divided us uh, this chasm means chasm of racial biasness so this chasm of racial biasness has created a division between the black and the whites and we need a bridge you know what is bridge that uh, you know connects the gap so the, what is the function of a bridge which connects the two roads you know there is a river in between uh, uh, the road so we need a bridge so what is the function of the bridge the function of the bridge is to connect the two roads so mandela is uh, using a kind of you know uh, uh, metaphorical language uh, to indicate that we need a bridge maybe this he indicates the bridge of uh, trust the bridge of uh, you know sympathy so we need something to bridge the gap that exists uh, between the blacks and the whites we have at last achieved our political emancipation so what does Man and mandela indicate that uh, politically we are free uh, politically we have become a free country now we have gained democracy uh, but what he uh, basically wants to indicate that achieving political emancipation may not be the only freedom that can ensure that can eliminate you know not ensure that can eliminate racial discrimination so mere political emancipation may not ensure 
the elimination of racial discrimination we need financial or economic emancipation we need social emancipation we need cultural emancipation so there are different types of uh, emancipation that we need in 1993 mandela was awarded the nobel prize an honor he shared with f w d clark the white african leader who had freed him from prison 3 years earlier and negotiated the end of apartheid so in 1993 mandela was awarded the nobel prize for peace you know nobel peace prize so for peace mandela was awarded uh, nobel prize and with mandela another person was also awarded nobel prize from south africa and that person was white mandela was black and that person was white and who was that person an honor he shared with f w d clark his name was f w d clark so who is f w d clark a white leader in south africa the white african leader so uh, f w d clark was a white african leader and he took a great initiative to free mandela from the prison who had freed uh, him from prison 3 years earlier and uh, f w d clark helped mandela to come out of the prison i mean to get freedom and 3 years back that means uh, in 1990s and negotiated the end of apartheid and he played a significant role in the negotiation uh, that basically resulted into the freedom of nelson mandela and uh, because of his initiative to negotiate uh, between the blacks and the whites f w d clark's contribution uh, in this sector in this particular case and uh, is very important that is why uh, both nelson mandela uh, the black, uh, leader of the black people he himself was black and f w d clark he was a white person but he you know i have already uh, explained that he helped mandela to get his freedom and he arranged the negotiation between the blacks and whites and thus freed mandela from the prison both these persons were awarded nobel peace prize mandela went on to play a prominent role on the world stage so after getting uh, you know not up, uh, usually after getting even when mandela was within the prison he was the symbol of protest and struggle uh, throughout the world so mandela went on to play a prominent role on the world stage as an advocate of human dignity in the face of challenges ranging, ranging from political repression to aids so mandela uh, played a prominent role on the world stage so he continued to play a prominent role on the world stage and as an advocate of human uh, dignity so a prominent means very important role uh, uh, as an advocate means as as a person who uh, talked for human dignity who talked uh, basically supported human dignity in the face of challenges ranging from political repression to aids and you know that he stood for human dignity and uh, he stood for uh, the human dignity but he had to face challenges and challenges were uh, th- these were political challenges and these were uh, you know challenges coming from different diseases south africa was badly affected by aids and south africa as we have already noticed that the south, black south african people they were politically repressed so mandela faced two problems the first problem is the political repression and the second problem is aids so it it doesn't mean that when mandela became the president of uh, south africa uh, the path was smooth no the road was not smooth because he had to still face the political repression and uh, he had to fight against aids he formally left public life in june 2004 before his 86th birthday so after uh, becoming president he ruled south africa successfully and uh, you know he took retirement in 2004 on his 86th birthday and he left public life that means he uh, left the uh, position as well 
telling his adoring countrymen, or adoring means lovable countrymen, uh, he, and, uh, and uh, when he took retirement, he gave a message to the, to the uh, South African people and said, don't call me, I will call you. He requested them not to call him again back to, uh, you know, political issues. Uh, if necessary, he said that he would call the people. But he remained one of the world's most revered public figures. Revered means respected. But even after his retirement from political life, he was still respected by people across the world. Combining celebrity sparkle with an unwavering message of freedom, respect and human rights. So his, in his character, there was a kind of spark, you know, and this spark was the spark of celebrity. You can say that uh, basically the film stars, the footballers, the cricketers, they basically become the stars. They basically become celebrity. But, you know, sometimes there are political celebrities as well. Uh, the father of our nation, Bangabandhu, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, he was also that kind of great leader, you know. And uh, Nelson Mandela, they have basically, uh, they are basically uh, celebrity in the political uh, arena. So, you know, uh, he had a kind of the spark of a celebrity unwavering, that means uh, not dwindling, that means determined, that means strong. So there was no chance or scope for un, uh, I mean wavering. Uh, unwavering means remaining straight, remaining rigid, remaining determined. So he was, his, his message was determined, his message was straightforward. And regarding what? Regarding freedom, respect and human rights. So he did not make any compromise in the issues of freedom, respect, and human rights. There was no compromise. So he was such a leader that who remained, uh, you know, unwavering, and who was, uh, you know, rigid regarding the issues of freedom, respect, and human rights. There was no scope, there was no room for compromise. He is at the epicenter of our time, ours in South Africa, and yours wherever you are, Nadine Gordimer, the South African writer and Nobel laureate for literature once remarked. So Nadine Gordimer was a South African, uh, you know, uh, writer and got Nobel uh, Prize for literature. And Nadine Gordimer, uh, when remarked about uh, Nelson Mandela, said that Mandela is at the epicenter. You know what is epicenter? The center of the center. So Mandela is at the epicenter of our time. That means when Mandela wa uh, was in power, he was alive. Ours in South Africa and yours wherever you are. So what Nardin Gaudima said that Mandela is not only at the center of South Africa, Mandela is at the center of everywhere in the world. That means he is the center of the earth. Why Nardin Gaudima said this? Because I have also explained that Mandela was became a world leader. He emerged as a leader who was respected all over the world. And people used to find encouragement, inspiration, you know, uh, from Mandela's, uh, st uh, you know, struggle for democracy, struggle uh, for the oppressed people and against the rulers, I mean, oppressive rulers. The years Mandela spent behind bars made him the world's most celebrated political prisoner. So Mandela spent almost 30 years uh, behind Bars, that means in prison and uh, we know that and uh, his staying or his stay in the prison made him world's most celebrated prisoner so he was the most celebrated prisoner of the world and leader of mythic stature and he almost reached the status of myth mythical uh, personality that means uh, you know what is myth that when uh, stories are made when stories continue or episodes continue generations after generations and new uh, things are also added to the existing story. So he became almost or he emerged almost as a mythological character that means mythic, a person with mythic stature. And what is myth? You know, uh, we have, uh, you know, different types of myth, uh, this uh, South Asian myth or Indian myth, Greek myth. So myth means uh, in you know uh, we have we have 
very uh, famous epics like Mahabharata, Ramayana. So these uh, Iliad, Odyssey. So all these epics are also based on different mythological uh, issues and mythological stories. So myth is not exactly history, but myth. Uh, myth we we don't have uh, you know historical uh, you know proof when uh, we read mythological items, but still. Uh, there is a connection between history and uh, some researchers also say that the mythol some of the or many of the mythological uh, stories are true and as days passed and as things were not written as stories continued verbally for generations together there may be some addition there may be some exaggeration but they existed and can you guess that when a story continues for generation to generation when the story is extraordinary when the you know, fight is extraordinary. So, what happened to happened to Nelson Mandela that his status, his charisma, his uh, image uh, reached him to a such to such a position that people also started making story about himself. Obviously, uh, we are talking from positive point of view. So, he became almost a mythological uh, character. I mean, mythic stature, character with mythic stature. For millions of black South Africans and other oppressed people far beyond his country's borders. So he is, uh, he became a person, he became a popular person, not only in South Africa, but everywhere in the world. Charged with capital offenses in the 1963 Rivonia trial, uh, this is uh, the beginning. Uh, we are going, uh, you know, flashback to Mandela's uh, early life. It was in 1963, through Rivonia trial, Mandela was tried and he was charged with capital offenses. That means he was charged... Uh, uh, and he was accused of going against the state. His statement from the dock was his political testimony, but when he stood at the dock and in the, in the trial, he uh, said something to the court. And what he said was basically his belief, his philosophy, testimony, you know, uh, his philosophy, his belief. What was his belief? What he said? He said, during my lifetime, I have dedicated myself to, the, to this uh, struggle of South African people. He said that he dedicated his life for the struggle uh, 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 of the South African, uh, South African uh, people. He struggled for the South African people. I have fought against white domination and I have fought against black domination. He said that I am not against the white people. I am not against the black people or I am not for the white people or I am not for the black people. I am for both white people and I am for uh, black people as well. So he wanted a kind of reconciliation. He was not that type of leader that was completely against the white people. He wanted to govern South Africa from logical point of view, from rational point of view. And he, he wanted to, uh, the distribution of power in terms of vote, in terms of democratic uh, attitude and democratic philosophy. So he said that he was against any sort of domination, whether coming from the white people or coming from the black people. So that was not Mandela's concern. He was against domination. I have cherished um, the ideal of a democratic and free society in which all persons live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. So he says that he cherishes, the, cherishes uh, or nourishes uh, 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 the ideal of a democratic and free society. So he cherished the ideal. He had, a, he had an aim. He had a desire for a democratic and free society. And what kind of society? Society in which all persons live together in harmony, in happiness, uh, in reconciliation. Harmony means happiness, reconciliation. So he uh, imagined, he, he desired for a country where every person would live in harmony and with equal opportunities, he told the court. And he uh, desired, he imagined, he uh, expected a kind of country where every person would enjoy, uh, you know, the same opportunity he told uh, the court. It is an ideal I hope to live for and to achieve. So he also said that this is the ideal, this is the aim for which he is living. And this is the aim that he wants to achieve. But if needs be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. But Mandel also continues to say that if it is necessary, if it if needs be, it means that if it is necessary, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. Uh, he says that if it is necessary, then I am ready to die. 
for this ideal, for this you know, aim or for this objective, I am ready to die. So, but if needs be, it's a new structure for you. If needs be, it indicates that if it is needed or if it is necessary, then I am ready to die for my goal, for my objective, for my dream. And what is my dream? My dream is to liberate South Africa from the clutches of, you know, imprisonment and from the clutches of, you know, oppression and suppression. So I want to free South Africa from all sorts of suppression and oppression, whether coming from the black people or coming from the white people. Friends adored Mandela and fondly called him Madiba, uh, the clan name by which he was known. So people uh, loved Mandela, adored Mandela very much. They loved uh, Mandela and they fondly called Mandela by his clan name, his, uh, in the name of the family, I mean the family name. And what was the family name? Madiba. People lauded his humanity, kindness and dignity. Lauded means praised. So people praised Mandela for his humanity, for his kindness and for his dignity. So these are the things for which Mandela was, you know, appreciated and praised highly. Now, dear students, that um, I said at the beginning when I uh, discussed that uh, you uh, will be given some passages for question answer and multiple choices, uh, choices question and some questions will be there, some, some passages will be there also for practicing flowchart, some passages will be there, I mean lessons will be there for summary writing. So uh, over here what we see, uh, you know, that I have, uh, I have fixed some questions, uh, you know, and uh, these questions, uh, when you will answer, don't, uh, you know, make your answer big. Don't uh, make it lengthy. So what did Mandela fight for? So when you will, I'm just explaining the answer of the questions. I'm not uh, writing the answer over here because it's uh, your responsibility. You have to write the answers. I'm just giving you the clues. It's better to answer a question in two sentences, not more than two sentences. But sometimes it may be necessary for you to make it bigger. You will understand that when it's needed. So what did Mandela fight for? We all know by this time we have come to know that Mandela fought for democracy. He fought against, you know, oppression and suppression. He fought for the freedom of the black people. So these are the things that you have to bring. Uh, for the answer of this question and uh, I say that it's better to answer in two sentences and not to make your uh, answer too big unless it is uh, necessary. So how much did he hate racism? He hated racism intensely. Can you remember the word? Oh, one more thing I want to share with you that don't copy the sentences directly from the text. Uh, it's better to use your own language. Obviously, you have to take the essence from the text, but when you will write the answer, please write the answer in your own words. So how much did he hate racism? Uh, he hated racism intensely. Uh, that is the first answer. And then you can, in the second sentence, you can say that he hated uh, racism and wanted to uproot it both from, uh, you know, uh, he did not expect oppression either from the white side or from the black side. Why did Nadine Gordimar remark, he is at the epicenter of our time, ours in South Africa and yours, wherever you are. Why did Nadin Gordimar remark? Nadin Gordimar remarked because Mandela was the source of inspiration, not only for the South African people, but for all the oppressed people of the world. You notice that I did not use the sentence from the text. I, I used the essence from the text, but I did not use the textual sentence. I formed a sentence myself. So Nadine Gordimer said, why Nadine Gordimer said this? Because Mandela is at the epicenter of our time, ours in South Africa and yours were very well. So Mandela is at the center of the South African people. He is at the center of the oppressed people everywhere in the world and every time. Not only the time when Mandela was alive, he is still the source of inspiration. What emancipation did Mandela hint at by saying we have at last achieved our political emancipation? So when Mandela said that uh, we have achieved our political emancipation, he means that we have gained democracy. But apart from political emancipation, there are other sorts of emancipation like cultural eman emancipation, you know, like uh, social emancipation. Uh, so there are different types of emancipation as well. 
Mandela is quoted in the report as saying, it is an ideal I hope to live for and to achieve, but if needs be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. What ideal he is talking about? Uh, he is uh, talking about the freedom of the uh, South African people, he, equality of the South African people. He was talking about the equality. He wanted equal rights, uh, both for the blacks and the white people. He wanted equality in South Africa and democracy in South Africa. And that is the ideal for which he uh, uh, said that he survived and uh, that is the uh, you know reason or that is the uh, aim for which uh, target for which he uh, said that he survived dear students uh, from the first class i'm telling you one thing that our textbook is very important you know uh, why the textbook is important we are repeatedly telling you because uh, you know the multiple choice question answers the question answers uh, these uh, items you are supposed to answer and these items are based on passages and the passages are taken from the text you already know that not only that you know the flowchart summary writing these items are also directly linked with the text even even the theme writing is also directly linked with the text and there are other items like you know rearranging fill in the gaps activities with clues or without clues so writing paragraphs these items are also somehow linked to the textbook so our understanding uh, with the textbook has to be very clear has to be very solid so you know it's not possible to discuss all different types of items in a single class so as the textbook is very important we are going you know uh, further regarding with the textbook we are advancing and uh, sometimes you will notice that the teachers are taking class on a particular item like flowchart, graph chart, or theme writing. We will also uh, take arrange classes on these items as well. And remember that whenever we discuss these items, we have to keep our discussions and explanations based on the textbook. So that's why we are encouraging you to read the textbook. And I hope that you will continue reading the textbook. So thank you very much for today's class and see you in my next class. Thank you very much.